big family Q and A, but our schedules oh, are so crazy right now, what? and everyone is so I don't know, like busy, 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 yeah. busy. So some of the questions that are geared towards certain kids, we will ask them when they get home or when they're not busy yeah. doing something. But for right now, we have Alex, Hallie, and Aurora. Aww. And mom and dad. And mom and dad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Aaron's gonna be our question reader. <clears throat> All right, so this first question is from at Aaron underscore crazy pieces. When are Alex and Aaron gonna get haircuts? Cause they are looking like oh shaggy gosh. folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely need them. Um, Thank you at Aaron yeah, underscore crazy pieces, Instagram plug, shameless, hashtag. Um, yeah. What do you think about that one, Crystal? <laughs> When I'm not busy. <laughs> I kind of want to grow my now Like see everybody where it goes. else. I kind of want to grow my now see where it goes from there. Okay. See where it goes from there. I want to get a perm. I'll probably, yes, <laughs> I'll do it with you. I'll redo my hair. Your hair is not long enough. We're not doing the perm uh, video. Okay, I'll keep growing it until it's long enough. You don't ever have to look too far. You don't have to cover up your scars. You're perfect, darling, just the way you are. Before you think to rip yourself apart Open up my heart and you'll find love Love, love, love Do you Let's feel go. lucky? Do you think your question's in this bowl? I shook it up really good, so we'll see what happens. <clears throat> All right, Amy Strickland asks, any advantages or disadvantages on being such young parents? You guys seem to have it all together. I definitely don't have it together. We don't have it all together. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> we just try our best every day. But I do feel like there is a little bit of an advantage because I feel like we still have a ton of energy and I feel like I can relate to the kids, even though I didn't have cell phones like in my age. Speaking Sorry, of cell phones. Going, right? Hashtag silence your phone. Right. Okay. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Hold on, it's Jake. Oh, he, uh, he's gonna ask me. Hello? Can I go to the park? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should have had it on speaker. <laughs> okay. Love you, bye. And I agree, uh, yeah, being uh, younger, I'm sure I have more energy than I would say five or 10 years down the road. <laughs> and I feel like we can relate like a lot of what the kids go through because I feel like even it's even way different than what we were because there wasn't all the social media back then but I do feel like we can somewhat relate. I have a terrible memory but I do still kind of remember my teenage years so I think it helps me too. Yeah it's yeah. funny because when we like ask like their help for something they're like back in my day it's like you guys aren't even that old. <laughs> Oh, no. We can't use the back in my day excuse for Come sure. on, man. All right, next oh, question. All right. Uh, that one is already for somebody else. Okay. I'm in this Q&A now. Oh, Brody's joining our Q&A. Oh, Antoinette Hop. Hap. Do you and Aaron ever take a vacation alone to rekindle your relationship? Thank you so much for your videos. They are a great part of my day. Well, you are welcome. And we actually took a trip just Last weekend. I was like, we got this question before we filmed our anniversary vid video. And as you guys saw, we did take like, it was like a 24 hour trip. Like it was really quick. We yeah. did no, use to take trips. Often. <laughs> yeah, we did use to take trips like to Vegas or different things. Blush. Once Aurora got diagnosed with epilepsy, um, we haven't taken as many, at least by ourselves, because we were just, it scared us. Even We're better Aurora with it now has been seizure free for what five Very months nice. she's okay. been seizure free since may at least like the big tonic clonic seizures so she's only had a few of the absent ones it's still stressful but it's still I mean, we, we got halfway through our trip and i was already stressing like oh what's gonna happen is she gonna be okay so yeah. you got dad 2.0 over here Dad 2.0 true i'm good with kids <laughs> we figured we'll get I'll all that time together daycare. oh well We'll get trip together, like more time together once the kids are grown and out of the house. So. Once I leave. Yeah. You're never <laughs> leaving. Just, you're never Whoa! Leaving. Whoa. Leaving. YouTube comments said that. You yeah, can't they ever agree leave. with me. What? Can't ever leave. That was we'll miss you. <laughs> we'll be so sad. Okay, so um, Angela 
Borgias, sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. How do you manage meal times? Do your kids spend for themselves if they don't like the food served to them at meal time? Do you have picky eaters? Oh my gosh. Okay, we yeah. have a lot. Oh, I'm the picky started. eater. Brody is the pickiest Brody is eater the in our house. Eater. So I typically create a meal or make a meal um, for the family. His food is so good. It's really good. Some people like it, some people don't. So yes, good. we have plenty of picky eaters. Ariana hates onions. Um, and tomatoes. Savannah and, and Ariana hate tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of others. The list goes on and I have a whole spreadsheet checklist in the kitchen somewhere that I just check it off. We don't like require our kids to eat exactly what we're making. They do have an option to have something else. But we are not like a restaurant. We don't make different meals for different kids. Like if they don't want what we're having, they have to make something themselves. The and only I, one- I push fruits and vegetables constantly. <laughs> the other, the only one we do tailor to is Hallie and her gluten free. So we will take the pasta out of like pasta salad and just yeah. put, you know what I mean, all the other ingredients in. Uh, hi, crazy pieces. This is from Laura Khan. What advice would you give to someone who is about to start going through the process of becoming a foster parent? I love you guys. Love you, Laura. That's awesome that you're becoming a foster parent. Also, it is the most rewarding and amazing thing. Not without its trials and tribulations. Yeah. Yes, and so I would say its biggest like advice that I would give for that one is always keep your heart and your mind open. And whatever you expect going in, it's not usually the case. <laughs> so don't hold on to those expectations. Just go with whatever your heart feels and whatever falls into place. I don't know if you're going to adopt. Um, when we first entered foster care, we were planning to adopt. That was our ultimate goal. Um, and our first placement was with us for two years and three months? Two years and two months. Two years and two months. And we thought all along that we were gonna get to adopt her and it didn't end up happening and she went home to her mom, which we're happy for them that they were able to be reunited, but we were super attached. And when she left, it literally felt like a child had passed away. And I know it affected all of our families. Hallie had a really hard time with it. So be ready, it does hurt sometimes. Just know that the time you did spend with that child, you gave them love and showed them what that looked like and felt like, and just know that you made a difference in that kid's life, no matter how short or long they are with you. And one more thing, so every child is different so, and they have their own different situations. So no matter what it is, just do your best to work with them through anything, even if it's something small. It's the little things that matter most. I love that. All right, this is from Tony Michelle. What behavior did the kids have when first entering the home that they struggled with the most, and what was it that really helped them overcome it? I'll start. Go ahead. <clears throat> so I didn't really have anger issues, but I did get upset very easily. So I'd throw a bunch of like temper tantrums, and I got mad super easily, which would cause fights with the other kids, and then ultimately end up with me being in trouble. So that was my biggest, like, misbehavior thing. And how would you say you overcame it? It was mom always being so calm in that situation. Like, it was crazy how calm she was. I would be like, screaming, crying, just throwing things everywhere. And she's just standing there like, I love you and just like encouraging and I'm just like, supposed to fight back with me. <laughs> he did yell at me one time. He's like, just fight back with me. And I was like, I love you too much to argue <laughs> yeah, with you. Yeah, like, And he was oh, like, ugh. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> but it was always mom being so calm that just really like made me think like, no, oh, it's not worth it. <laughs> if you have a specific scenario or behavior that you're curious about, please comment below and we will try to respond to you. We can also do um, a video on the app that's more one-on-one -on -one and more personal. So if you do have questions and you would like them answered on the app, we can do that. And it can be a lot more on a personal level because every situation is so different. But I would say the number one or the number one behavior that I noticed in the majority of our kids were temper tantrums and hoarding food. Those were the two biggest issues or biggest things that we went with at first with probably almost every child that we had. And how did yeah. you handle those? How would you overcome those two? Just well, I think the food thing, um, constantly reassuring that there's always food around, keeping fruits and vegetables on the counters, letting them know 
that they can have those fruits and vegetables at any time. Um, even if, I mean, if, it, if it's like an extreme case, doing a fanny pack on them with snacks and healthy things in it so that they're always like, okay, there's gonna be food and they don't have to constantly worry about where their next meal is coming from. And temper tantrums being patient. Most kids coming to the situation are experiencing a loss and are grieving in some way or another, whether it's from teachers, friends, because moving schools, obviously their parents and biological families, like they're going through a loss and be patient through those temper tantrums because there is a reason behind them and try to figure out that reason and solve that and the temper tantrums will go away, hopefully. <laughs> It was scary how patient she was. I had no idea how she did it. When Mahar, Mayor, Mar, okay. Would any of the older kids think about adopting themselves? I am. You are? For yeah. sure? What about you, Holly? I don't, I don't know. I'm like, I don't even know what college I'm gonna go to. I can't think <laughs> of a kid yet. <laughs> for me? Good answer, for me. good answer. Well, the only reason being is because being adopted by mom and dad helped save me in a way that a lot of people don't understand. And so I wanna be able to do that for other kids in the future that are struggling. I would say like 70 to 80% of our kids want to adopt when they're older. I think adoption is like a really cool thing. And if I don't end up adopting, I hope that I'm like financially stable enough to like donate to adoption centers and just like help out the kids or like she'll just the, do oh, she'll be the crazy cat lady <laughs> <laughs> crazy cat. no i'll have kids but if i don't end up doing adoption i want to like donate and like do charity work help in some way that's awesome. yeah so alex spencer asks how hard was it to start adopting and how long did it take to get started okay so, was that well just a few pieces of paper okay every state a lot of every state every country it has different systems so from my understanding in the united kingdom it is super hard to adopt i can only speak from our experience so yeah. in okay. arizona in order to get foster care certified you had to take a 30-hour class so it was three three class or 10 classes three hours long now it's a little bit easier you could only take so many hours per week yeah um but now you can take a lot more so it did take us 10 weeks to complete all the classes and um six months to get our full license so Jeez. it is a six month process roughly we, we have actually been licensed three different times yeah so it each, was faster each time. time we did it it was faster the consecutive times yeah maybe because so, we knew the process and the paperwork more but i don't know do i find it i guess hard to adopt in some ways yes um it did take us doing foster care for a while to be able to find kids that um were our forever kids, I guess, if that makes sense. And, but I know it looked really easy on our channel when we were like, we're gonna be adopting. And then a few months later, we have two kids that we're adopting. It doesn't normally fall into place that quickly. Um, sometimes yeah. it does when it's meant to be, and then sometimes it takes a lot longer, so. Absolutely. Angel Matthews, it's a long one. My question is, do you ever feel guilty like you don't have enough time, patience, love, or energy for each of your children? I'm a fellow foster parent and we have five kids total. Sometimes I feel like all I do is cook and clean and feel awful that I don't get to spend more quality time with them. Between caseworkers, therapists, DCFS, GAL, CASA, etc., coming and going, I feel like it's a constant battle to keep things tidy and spend quality time with them. All of my kids are under 10, by the way. You are awesome and I honestly don't know how you all do it, let, let alone with such grace. God bless you. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. First off, I want to say that's awesome that you do foster care also, and it's amazing to have that many kids under the age of 10. That's a lot yeah, of work. That's a lot. <laughs> At one point, we were in that same situation, and it is definitely a lot. Um, Ariana's here. You can join in, Ariana. You can stand Hi. right there. Actually, you can take Alex's place because Alex. So Alex needs to go pick up Luke and or Lucas and him now. Alex needs to go pick up Lucas and Hannah from school. So and then I have back. practice after, so I'll be back later. A little bit more to your question. Do I ever feel guilty about it? I mean, sometimes, definitely. I think that there's times when 
Um, as we went through the process and when you're doing foster care, there are a lot of visits with caseworkers and like you said, CASAs and all these people coming in and out of your house. Once kids are adopted, you don't have any of that and any of those appointments. But as far as people coming over, you do have a lot less appointments. But I think on the same time, you need to give yourself credit wherever you can and spend as much quality time and give your patients as much as you can. And it's okay to have a messy house sometimes. Sometimes I go sit and talk to the kids. Like last night, I actually had a really good conversation with Hallie. Normally I go to bed at like nine o'clock, but I stayed up till like 11 talking to her last night. Yeah. And it was okay. Like I loved that. I much would have rather had two hours less of sleep and have a really good conversation with her. And it's the same thing with having a clean house. Sometimes I would rather just sit and spend time with the kids and not worry about a clean house or let the house be dirty and that's okay. As some of our viewers have commented, your house is lived in and I love that because it- It is lived in. It is lived in, you know? It, you can't always have a perfect house. Um, growing up, not, not to throw my mom under the bus or anything, I felt like I lived in a museum. My house was always constantly clean and that's not good for kids either. I think a little bit of chaos and okay. You know, it, it's yeah, okay. a little bit it's of acceptable. chaos is good for the soul. Yeah. yeah, and my recommendation too is like for me, I run to the store a lot. I go do this, I go do that. So sometimes, in order to get that one-on-one -on -one attention, I'll invite a child with me that I haven't taken recently. And I then love going to the store with him. Ariana loves it. <laughs> she asks me constantly, "Can I go to the store with you?" And I love that because it's she and I get to spend some time together. This is from Anna Sanyapool. Sanyapool. Sorry if I've mispronounced it. Uh, you have such an amazing family. Love watching your family. Thank you. Um, with Luke and Savannah being biological siblings, does that make the other adopted kids sad that they weren't able to be adopted together with their siblings? That's a question for Ariana. That's a perfect question for Ariana. Yeah, Ari. go ahead. Um, I mean, I guess it just depends on the situation because like with me and my sister, we got along really well, but I definitely feel like we fit together not being with each other just because we were with each other for so long and what we went through together, I feel like we had not closure, but like some time to like separate and like get to know like how we were alone. But I do understand with them, probably because they were together their whole life, it's like they have that connection and they can't be apart. Rather with me and my sister, I guess it was like, I knew what was best for me and I felt like not being with her would better myself. So I guess it just really depends on how you feel. I think it is different. Like for Hannah, her and her, uh, her biological sister, Sam or Natasha, um, chose to leave our home and not be adopted. And I think that was really hard for Hannah, but at the same time, Natasha needed that for herself to be able to grow and get over her trauma. Brittany Nguyen says, do you guys have certain rules slash a rule book like the crazy middles for your family as well? So the answer to that is no. We do not have a rule book like the crazy middles have. Um, however, we do have rules in our house. Like we still have rules and boundaries. Yeah, but they're not just like, they're not like written down. Yeah, like, we don't have like a book They're like They're like it. verbally communicated. Not like, sign here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is from Becca Berdu Royster says, kids, what is your most favorite thing about having lots of siblings? And Crystal and Aaron, what is the hardest part of having 13 children? Do they ever fight with each other? Oh my goodness. Do they ever fight? Yes. <laughs> they are normal kids. They are normal teenagers with teenage attitudes some days and there are some fighting. Not a ton. I would say when we were quarantined, they actually did so good. It was like, like not really funny. We shockingly got a well, got got along well. Yeah. Um, I can yeah. safely say I, I, I want to go back too. into quarantine because I think that was the most <laughs> bliss our family ever had. I don't know why we got along so well, but yeah. probably because we just knew that. We didn't know how long we were gonna be quarantined together, so we just had to be. <laughs> we, <just made> our, <laughs> we were all each other had. <laughs> <laughs> there was another part to that question. What, uh, what's the hardest part? Oh, about what's the hardest 13 part 13 about kids? having thirteen? Kids? Oh, the hardest part about having thirteen kids, probably when all their sports, like if they are in different sports or to have different activities going on all at once trying to be everywhere and support everybody is really difficult. That's why I love when they do sports together. <laughs> like it's easy cause when we cheer at varsity, 
or JV. Hannah cheers as JV so mom can go watch Luke and watch Hannah. When we cheer at varsity, mom can go watch me, Hallie, and Hannah, and Alex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely the hardest part is when you have kids in say middle school and high school and they're in yeah. different sports. Yeah. So some, of the, all of those, uh, ki our kids in middle school would have different times that they would go, um, or sometimes it was at the same time. So you'd have to go to the middle school for one sport and the high school for another sport and that can be really difficult. Like yeah. last year, whenever that would happen, because Hannah did cheer in middle school last year, she would go to one of Hannah's games and then the next week go to one of Alex's games because she went to Hannah's game last week. So she would like take And have turns. to rotate, but I wish I could be like everywhere at once. Like there was 20 of me. <laughs> that would be nice. If you can clone, yeah. call us. Katina Austria says, we don't ever see the kids watching TV. I'm sure it would be make a more, very boring vlog, but curious as to what the kids and mom and dad like to watch on YouTube or binge watch. What are you all fans of? So I wouldn't say that we watch a ton of TV. For the most part, the kids mostly watch YouTube. I think our satellite does. Uh, Unspeakable and the Loud House. Oh, those are the two that he likes to watch. <laughs> I think our Dish TV is very highly underused for what we're paying for, but yeah. Yeah, I only watch like... Or Netflix. Like so. Netflix, yeah. HBO Max, and Disney Plus. What do you guys watch? What's like your favorite show right now? Um, on Netflix, I'm currently re-watching... I'm currently re-watching a series on my blog. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, All American. That was really good. That is a good one. I don't know, I, I, don't like, I don't like series because then like you can just keep watching it and watching it. Rather with movies, it's only like a one-time thing and then you don't really want to watch it anymore because you already watched the whole movie. Rather with series, it's like, oh, okay, well, let's watch the next episode and the next episode and the next episode, you know what I mean? What about you, Holly? What's your favorite right now? Um, I haven't really spent a lot of time like watching Netflix recently. It's more of been YouTube for me. And I watch like our vlogs. I watch Minecraft streamers, just like Twitch streamers. Among Us. Among Us, which is a new popular game. I love that. For Crystal and I, um, our favorite show that we've been I watching love... forever is Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. Okay, I was gonna say the same. I love Grey's Anatomy. Um, but we're so busy that I just don't feel like we spend a lot of time. Oh my on gosh! The and Vampire Diaries. I just started it. Like oh. a couple months ago, it's really good. I haven't watched it recently, but I need to start watching it again. Courtney Rindy says, has birth order affected your family when adopting new kids? For example, Luke is older than Jake, or how Alex is older than Hallie. Much love from Canada. So when we first started doing foster care and adopting, we did want to keep birth order actually, as a matter of fact, like we did say seven and younger because um, Hallie was had, she was right before she turned eight years old. Yeah. And so we thought that would be the case, but it ended up not working out that way. Like when, and yeah. how do you, do you feel like it affects like, or do you still feel like the oldest? Like what's the thoughts on it? Well, I do kind of still feel like the oldest cause like that's been my role my entire life until like obviously Alex and we have Melinda and Jamie. And like they're older than me, but I feel like I'm the same age as them. And I just like kind of blend into like the adults cause I'm just so mature. <laughs> and like when I found out that Ariana, cause originally you came, you were like, oh, were you eight? So funny thing is, so when Ariana came, they told us she was a year younger than what she was. So yeah. how so I was like, yes, I still get to be the oldest. And then I found out she was three days older than me. <laughs> But do you feel like she's two days older than you? No. Uh, like, what are you <laughs> no. talking about? <laughs> Holly, I tell you, I tell you. She tells me what to do a lot, but like. Okay, story time really quick. We were at practice one day, and our coach was like, guys, you guys, like, do you guys, wait, what did she say? She's like, oh, when your parents tell you, like, hey, go clean your room, hey, go do this, like, you follow those instructions. Oh, yeah. And then Hallie was like, um, actually, it's Ariana who tells me what to do, because we, <laughs> we do the same tour, so I'm like, Hallie, do this, Hallie, do that, and she does yeah. it. So technically, I am I am the oldest, <laughs> and she does listen. Yeah. So what did I say? From a parent's perspective, what do you feel about birth order? So from a parent's perspective, I do feel that birth order, like I can definitely tell who the younger ones are and the older, but I think when it comes to like adoption yeah, and everything, yeah. however they fit in, it just seems to work out that way. Mary Hiltonen asks, do you ever worry about the kids' security since the world knows so much about them? Love the channel, just curious. Yes, 
That's, Absolutely. Yes, we do. I do worry that, um, well, as you guys saw, Alex got catfished a couple months ago. I worry about people pretending to be other people and trying to talk to my kids or trying to, I don't know, and we have a lot of people reach out to us. Um, and I don't know what's real and what's not real sometimes. So it does make me worry. Um, but we take all the precautions and all the safety measures as possible. Okay, so Wendy Paquette asks, as parents, how do you follow and maintain all different educational levels of each child? How do you remember their strengths and weaknesses? Is it difficult to ensure all of them keeping up with their homework, studies, and potential? It is pretty difficult. It is difficult. There's a lot of variation when it comes to education. I would say it's not bad. Like we have a lot of teenagers who do keep up on their work and know what they can't, you know, what they should be doing and shouldn't and that kind of thing. So it is easier when they are older. Um, when we were in quarantine, like right when we got quarantined and they were supposed to do like at home homeschool stuff, it was super, super difficult because there are yeah. so many different grade levels. There's so many different needs. Some of our kids have IEPs. Like it can be really difficult, but at the same time, I feel like we do pretty good at keeping up on it and knowing like, okay, this one needs that or this kid struggles in this area. And I think just over time, learning all the different kids and learning kind of where everybody is at and who needs help. Also, Hallie is like really, really smart. I do like, everyone's math homework, it's just. Like when she was younger, she went to like this really, really smart school that taught her like really high grade levels when she was in like second grade. So anytime I need help with something, I go to Hallie. <laughs> That's true. Some of the kids go to each other. Oh, and, and Dad. Dad's really good at math. Brian Anderson. I wonder if this is the Brian Anderson that I know. Oh. Okay. Uh, what are y'all looking forward to in these last two months of 2020? And what do y'all think of 2021? Or what do you all think 2021 will hold for the crazy pieces? Halloween. Christmas. I'm excited for Halloween. I'm excited for Christmas and New Year's because then 2020 is over. 2020 has been kind of a rough year, but we've had a lot of good things too. Um, I'm looking forward to Christmas. I love Christmas. I love the holidays. It's my favorite time of the year. I'm really looking forward to helping some families out. Um, so I'm super excited for our reverse advent. And what we're looking for in 2021, probably for Corona to go away. Definitely. <laughs> that's a good yeah. one. To be able to I travel again and meet people. I think that's going to happen at 2022. Oh. Okay. The year I graduate. The girls will be 17 next year. Oh, That'll yeah. be exciting. Yeah. That's fun. So I don't know what 2021 holds, but I hope something good. I hope it'll yeah. more travel. It Me was too. different. Yeah. So in 2019, we traveled a ton. A ton. Like oh, a ton. Yeah. We were like never home. And yeah. then in 2020, we were stuck at home. And then I'm hoping in 2021, it's a, maybe a mixture between 2019 and 2020. Being able to travel. Being able to travel. Yes. Uh, safely, yeah. Safely. But safely, yes. Okay, so uh, Ashley Kilmer asks, Hi, Crazy Pieces. Do any of your adopted ones have bio siblings in the crazy middles? I watch both your channels. I love what you guys do. My family also adopted a set of siblings. So we do not have any of our kids biological family in the crazy middles, but when we were fostering, sometimes we did foster like sibling groups where we would have two and they would have two or something like that. But adoption wise, we didn't end up adopting. Like when I first came, I lived with um, the crazy pieces, Crystal and Aaron, and then my sister actually lived with the crazy middles, so yeah. Summer Bray says, hi pieces, I have a little like Aurora. And I was wondering how y'all helped your other kids understand what was going on with her. So how we kind of like learned to understand, cause it was like a hard thing to adapt to with her um, epilepsy. epilepsy and like getting her medicine and like all that stuff. So we actually sat down for a family meeting the night after she had uh, a seizure. What was it? I think it was her second set. Her first set. No, it was her first set. It was right after we got back from the hospital is when we sat everyone down. Yeah, we sat down for like a meeting and dad actually, I don't know if you caught the first one on camera. He didn't catch the first one. I thought it was like the third one. I yeah. didn't, but I think I found some videos of tonic-clonic seizures 
and I was able to show the kids that. Yeah, so we kind of learned from like seeing videos and like them telling us like the safety procedures, like how to stay calm if she did have one and, and like, then, like put her on her left side with like yeah, her head don't put kind stuff of in her mouth. So she, she doesn't yeah, she move objects stuff. around her so she doesn't hurt herself. So I think our biggest thing is we chose not to shel like not to shelter our kids. Um, seizures are scary. They are like I was so scared. I'd never seen a seizure in person until Aurora had one. We did show the kids like what it looks like, how it feels to go through that situation, what our thoughts were on it, and we constantly kept that conversation open as far as her speech delay and all of that. Same thing when we were teaching her sign language, we were telling the kids what sign language she was doing so that they could understand it also and just kind of keeping that communication going between everyone um, really helped the kids understand it more. Yeah, and I honest, think, sorry, you can go. Oh. <laughs> I think like direct exposure to like the situation and like how to handle it like really helped like most of the kids understand. I don't know if the little ones like fully understand. like know what's happening. They'll get there eventually, but yeah. yeah. And honestly, I think it's a good thing not that she like has seizures but like that we were that us kids were able to understand like what to do because if we're ever in public and someone we don't know has one and a group of people in public don't know what to do you know what i mean like you can step up and possibly save someone's life you know that's true, yeah so. good to be knowledgeable about those things uh cameron cordova asked do the kids feel more at peace when they find out their dna stories I did, and I was wondering if they do. Unfortunately, my dad passed away, so I never got to meet him, but just knowing things about him saying, saying pictures made me feel at peace. I would say yes on this one. I wish Alex was here because Alex was the old thing, or was one of the ones that didn't know anything about his past. So when he was able to do his 23 and me test, he was like, I just feel like I know like my place now. Like I know who I am, I know what my heritage is, like just knowing all of that from the background. Did you feel the same, Ariana? Like uh, knowing stuff? Well, I mean I guess it's kinda different because like Alex didn't like know anything about his parents rather with me. Like I kind of knew some stuff, but um I am really grateful that I did know because honestly I didn't know anything about my her heritage and I I guess I would say like I care but like it never really crossed my mind. And now when people like ask me, I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm this and this. So it's like, it's good to know because then I have like an answer to give. Melanie O'Neill asks, any of the older children have triggers from their past? I understand it hard. It is hard for if it is hard for them to answer. I hope it. I don't didn't upset anyone. Do you have any triggers from your past? Um, no. I mean, I don't. No, I don't really. I mean, like, I understand like what a trigger is, but I've never had one personally. So some of the other kids do have triggers. Um, Alex in particular, you probably heard him say it in a video, but he has a trigger of anytime he feels like he's being choked or like gonna choke on something that he's eating, that kind of thing. He does have a little bit of anxiety around it. And, and I think some of the kids have triggers like they don't like to be controlled. So if there's a situation where they feel like they're not in control, they it does trigger certain feelings and they we have to work through those um our actually i'll leave that for another video but our two new kids we will talk about triggers in the future with them but as of right now we're not going to talk about that um but i don't think it's just foster kids and kids who have been through trauma that have triggers hallie actually does have some triggers i do you want to talk about it so like mom was saying about like how I sometimes have triggers so I have like really bad anxiety or I get like really stressed out and it's like not good like I completely shut down like I can't function like I just like put my head down and I just like I stop like I can't do anything I can't get myself to work on anything or like like Literally, I had one earlier today. Like I last night, actually. I've been having a bunch recently. I it's yeah. I just been I just get like really anxious, like when things are like stressful and stuff. And I was actually at the cousin's house the other day, and Lacey had what was it, like a trigger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Lacey had a trigger 
and that was like really scary to experience because like she just started like breaking down crying and I was like what's wrong and she was like I just had a trigger and I was like it was it was a scary thing to experience like from the outside so yes even triggers once you are like even if you've worked through a lot of things from your past triggers still can come up and bring back old memories so. Diane Aguar Guarta Dutra I'm sorry uh, this might be a little heavy, but have any of your kids feel or felt still stuck with your past? My daughter, 13, is struggling with her past with her bio parents, and I feel like she has a hard time accepting she isn't good enough and deserving of happiness. If so, parents, what would, you, what would be your advice to any adoptive parent going through this? Um, and hope this makes sense. Your videos bring me so much love and light hugs. Oh, thank you. Did you understand? So, yes, I did. Okay. Um, that's a hard one because I think that a lot of us, I mean, depending on how we grown up, every situation is so different, but being, or feeling like you're not good enough or why, why didn't my mom love me more or all of those feelings. I do feel like some of our kids struggle with um, in particular Alex I guess so I'm trying to like think of an example of it in my mind but Alex and you notice how grateful Alex is and he's always been that way because when he was younger he felt like he was never good enough like he didn't deserve good things in life and it's taken a lot of time of reiterating to him repeating to him constantly you are good enough you do deserve everything in this world and then some like you are such an amazing person. So I think if you have a child that's struggling with it, just keep reminding them of how special and how amazing that they are. And I would say, um, oh, and also explaining to your kids that sometimes addictions take over and it doesn't mean that their parents didn't love them. It doesn't mean that they weren't special, that they weren't chosen. Like all of these thoughts that they have in their mind when they feel like their parent gave them up to foster care or adoption, that kind of thing. When, when drugs come into play, it changes your brain's chemistry and the way that it works. And it can really change what your priorities are in life in a bad way. And that's why drugs are It is a type of mental illness. And in a lot of ways, it doesn't mean that they didn't love their kids. Like every single parent I met loved their kids, Absolutely. like loved them. And so it, they are special. It just unfortunately addictions take over sometimes and it doesn't feel like that. Liliana Gutierrez Guerrera says, hey, how and when was the first time they said mom or dad to you? Greetings and kisses from Mexico. So she didn't say specific kids, so I'm assuming she means everybody. Like in a general way. Um, well, because we were supposed to do it as a big family, so each kid could have answered. But every kid is, was, is and was completely different on when they called us mom and dad. Most of them, I would say within a couple weeks, um, but some took up to a month. So it just depends on each individual kid. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.